locomotives are constructed to operate in all types of climates, from scorching desert heat to frigid mountain winters. An ample supply of fresh air is required at all times for cooling and combustion. In the 1960s and 1970s, when trains operated through long tunnels or snowsheds at slow speeds, the ability of a unit to receive large amounts of air cool enough to dissipate heat was an issue for the Western Railroads, notably the Southern Pacific and the Rio Grande. Before the introduction of microprocessor technology, locomotives did not self-govern and would quickly overheat and fail in these conditions. SP had a policy of running long, heavy, slow trains through the tunnels. When you run slow, heavy trains, the diesel spend more time in the tunnels. EMDs have higher radiator intakes that suck in hot air from the upper parts of the tunnel. Evidently, Union Pacific, Burlington Northern, and others run their trains fast enough that they get out of the tunnels quick enough that the hot air does not affect them as much. SP did until they bought the tunnel motors instead. There's actually a story in Trains Magazine a few years back about EMD telling SP that they should run shorter, faster trains, and SP ignoring that advice. Ergo, they purchased the tunnel motors to cope with the extensive exposure to hot, cooling air. In the 1990s, SP bought a lot of GEs, which normally have lower cooling intakes, which makes all GEs de facto tunnel motors as all Alcos. That sounds all dandy, but I guess the crews don't like that. According to Doug Rydell, a former Seaboard CSX engineer, when you walk past the radiator intake with the fan on, it sucked any loose clothing over the grate surface and it got really dirty. The wire mesh that I'm referring to is a wire grill pressed into a series of V's and it collects leaves and trash that would otherwise be sucked into the radiators and clog them. Think like a giant bug screen on the grill of a car. The openings are larger, square footage-wise, than a standard SD model for improved airflow and for more air volume. The SD45 T-2 is a variant of the venerable SD45 that featured the Dash 2 upgrade components such as improved electronics and high-traction trucks, with the T denoting its cooling system modification. The intake for radiator cooling air was moved to the walkway level and the cooling fans themselves were under the radiator cores instead of above. Tunnel motors were built for mountainous regions in the United States, the western United States to be specific, where SP had previously encountered repeating overheating issues on their SD45s. The later SD40 T-2 looks similar to the SD45 T-2. One spotting difference is the longer hood on the SD45 T-2 to accommodate the V20 prime mover versus the V16 used on the SD40 T-2. The SD45 T-2's cab is further forward on the frame so there is less front porch. This mimics the differences between the SD45-2 and the SD40-2. Another spotting difference is the SD45 T-2's three fan access doors on each side above the cooling air intake while the SD40 T-2 has only two. The unique SD40 T-2 tunnel motor was the backbone of the Rio Grande and the Southern Pacific fleets during the 1970s and the 1980s. They were distinguished by the large see-through radiator grills at the rear of the locomotive just above the walkway. Like their SD40 T-2, some of SP's SD45 T-2 tunnel motors were obtained by the Kansas City Southern Railway, the Bessemer and Lake Erie Railroad, the Duluth, Masabi, and Iron Range Railway, and by the Union Pacific Railroad when it merged the SP in 1996. Some SD45 T-2s were rebuilt and designated to SD45 T-3, SD40 T-3, and SD40 2T. In addition, some locomotive leasing companies own the SD45 tunnel motor locomotives. They are scattered all over the United States today and unfortunately are becoming more and more an increasingly rare sight. Early attempts to address overheating including adding a water spray system on the radiators to improve cooling. This was followed by the application of elephant ears that ducted air from a lower point on the side of the locomotive and into the radiators. Both solutions had various degrees of success and contributed to the development of EMD's tunnel motor design which used the low air intake vents on the long hood and a cold side radiator fan system. This design places radiator fans between the intake and the radiators, which pushes a larger volume of cool air through the radiators versus a hot side fan system found on EMD hood units that pulls hot air exiting the car body. Several railroads, including the Canadian Pacific and the Chessie system, and even the MRS in Brazil, tested the elephant ear concept in an attempt to overdress overheating issues, but never ordered the tunnel motors. 
EMD's first tunnel motor, the SD45T-2, was a modified version of the SD40-2 as we just talked about. Southern Pacific and subsidiary Cotton Belt were the only buyers ordering 247 copies between 1972 and 1975. The tunnel motor variant of the highly successful SD40-2, the SD40T-2, gained slightly more buyers at 312, split between the Southern Pacific, the Cotton Belt, and the Rio Grande, orders that spanned from 1974 through the 1980. While no four-axle tunnel motors were ever ordered, EMD did design a tunnel motor version of the GP50 called the GP50T for the Rio Grande. Unfortunately, an unexpected order for 12 GP50Ts was never finalized and the design went unbuilt. The cold side radiator fan design with side air inlets used on the SD40T-2 and the SD45T-2s was applied to other EMD products in North America, such as the MP15AC, the MP15T, the GP15-1, the GP15AC, and the GP15T. Many EMD products around the world which were already using cold side radiator fans also received the new radiator design. Eventually, the tunnel motors that were built for the Southern Pacific and the Rio Grande, still on the roster in 1996, ended up in the employ of the Union Pacific. The majority of the tunnel motors were purged from UP's roster in the 2000s, ending up on dozens of other Class 1 railroads, short lines, regionals, and lease fleets across North America. Canadian National is the only Class 1 railroad operating the tunnel motor design today. It inherited two separate fleets of SD45T-2s rebuilt mechanically to SD40-3s during its acquisition of the Bessemer and Lake Erie in 2004 and the Duluth, Mesabi, and Iron Rage in 2011. Today, its fleet of 20 tunnel motors sees service primarily on Canadian National's iron ore operations in the upper Midwest. Mexico's Ferrocer, now Ferromex, reintroduced the elephant ear concept with 15 SD70 Aces constructed by EMD in early 2015. The tunnel motor concept using cold side fans would most likely not be feasible with the size of the radiator systems in today's locomotives, hence the application of the less efficient elephant ears. To compensate, these locomotives take advantage of the microprocessor system and GPS equipment on board that can adjust certain aspects of the locomotive, such as cooling the fluids in the radiator system below normal levels prior to entering tunnels on the railroad.